So we're going to continue on now with our next item. Uh, you may notice we're kind of running behind from what I originally said, what would be Web03, Web04, Web05. But what I'm going to do now is start moving us through to actually creating the profile page. Um, what we're doing at the moment is like how an artist would um, perform drawing a really complicated picture. They start sketching an outline first of all before they then start filling in all the detail as they go along. So what we're doing at the moment is very much blocking out all the different parts to the system as we need them and we're looking at what we actually need where rather than the code that actually goes to make up the detail. Um, so if we move across now uh, to our code uh, we've got our login control that's all working, uh, we've got our default page. We're now going to create our profile page. So what I'm going to do is add a new page, new item, right clicking on contact circle and it's again going to be a web form using the master page and it's going to be called profile using the master page. Uh, one of the benefits of um, coding uh, the way that we're doing it at the moment obviously with the controls etc and using the uh, server session data is that when we move to the profile page if the person's logged on the uh, login control here will actually just say welcome user it will actually have already realized they've logged on and we can actually use that to our benefit when they log on maybe the best idea would be to actually move them to their profile page so what we're going to do is when they've logged on and we say at the moment session dot add here at the bottom user ID uh, we're going to actually do um, a request redirect, so response redirect. No, I get that wrong. Uh, and we're going to redirect to the profile page. And we're going to use something called the query string, which is part of the address bar, to actually send through which profile we want to look at, which in this case is our own. But we're going to do it based on the ID of the user ID. So I'm going to use a special variable called ID, which I'm going to create in a moment. And I'm going to send through the user ID that we've currently got. Uh, if we actually try this out and see what happens, let's run the program. So it's going to start by loading up the default page. Um, we're going to type in our username and password as we had before. So it's going to be Chris and the password hopefully will have automatically remembered. It hasn't. It's automatically saved the wrong password. Of course we want password with a capital P. It's going to log in and can you see at the top now it's changed it to the profile ASPX page. So I've moved pages I'm now on the profile page rather than the uh, default page. And the profiles person that I'm on is ID1. How can we actually use that information? Well on the profile page itself, view code, I can say if query string, so if request dot query string, and then I can find the item that I want to find, which in this case is that ID. And I can say um, does not equal, which is an exclamation mark equal sign, null, which means if it exists, load up the correct person's profile. And we're going to do some code that actually loads up the right person's profile. But we only want this to happen when we first load up the page that's the profile page. So again, I'm going to say if this dot is postback equals equals false. Otherwise, it will run this code every single time you click a button on the page. And you don't really want that to happen. So what are we actually going to put on the profile page? Well, uh, I'm going to base it very, very, very loosely on Facebook. So I'm going to start by double clicking on the image component. So I'm going to load an image hit enter so that I'm moving below the item. I'm going to add a label and I'm going to make this called LB person and the image I'm going to save as IMG person, so image person. Again remember that you can pause this at any point and, and look at it as you wish. Um, so we're going to have the person's name and uh, photo there but what we really want is then alongside this um, their current status and maybe a, a list of statuses that they've already typed in. So um, to do that I'm actually going to go into the code because I'm going to create two div boxes. I'm going to start by putting a div box around what I've just put in and this is going to be the left hand side. Now I'm going to use some inline 
coding here just to save time and also to show you a difference between using a style sheet directly and, and um, using code actually in the style. Um, I can actually put instructions that would go in a CSS style sheet within the div tag itself. So in this case I want to float it left and I want to set the width to say um, 100 pixels for example. Uh, that's probably not very big, well it isn't very big, uh, but it will do for a start point. And then for my other one, I'm going to also float it left, but I'm not going to set a width at all. So now, if I write the words text here, you'll be able to see. Uh, you see we've got our image and our uh, label, and then you're going to have the text. Yeah, 100 is going to be far too small. So using trial and error, I'll make it something like 250. So we've got 250 and then the rest of the page will be taken up with the person's status, current status, etc. It's going to be quite basic this. Um, the image person, if we know that the width of the column is 250, we might as well actually set the width and the height to say 250 by 250. Oops. So that's going to be our box for our, uh, our person. Now you may notice our footer is now above our image and label I'm just going to put uh, in here person name so we can see it on the screen. I'm going to run the, the program and you'll see the problem once I start running it and it's to do with the float left that we've just put in in the boxes. So here's our start page, I'm going to type in my username, obviously it's saved the wrong password because Internet Explorer isn't clever enough to use capitalization. And uh, yeah, let's update the stored password. You can see now the problem. There's the footer, it's not at the bottom, the image is here, the text is, is there. It's all looking a bit messy and, and wrong. Um, this is what happens when you use float left. Uh, because these are now floating, but the footer isn't floating. So the footer is trying to fit itself in at the same point as where the float left is. How can we sort this problem out? Well, actually, we just create another div box and we tell it to clear the float, which means that this next div box will be underneath anything that floats. And I'm just going to put a space in underneath. And now you can see the footer is now underneath our invisible div box, the name, and then the writing is here. What happens if the writing gets too long? What's going to actually change with the, the size here? Well, it's actually going to end up flowing underneath the person's name. Now, this might look all right. Let's see what happens. Um, so what I'm going to do is just put in a line break and the word text here. And I'm going to copy it several times. So now when I go into the code, and uh, my mouse cursor for some reason has decided not to move connection lost, there we go. Uh, so now I've got all my text, as you can see, all in one place. Let's just see what happens once we log in. Now with our updated password, I should simply be able to go log in, there we go. So the page is going to extend as long as it needs to, which is just really what we want to happen. So. What are we going to do next? Well, the next thing we need to do, actually do is get the information for the profile. We need the person's name and we need the image. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to start by adding a new folder called images, which is where we're going to store the people's images. And then we're going to go into our user object. This is where we're going to actually start putting in some of the code. So first of all, we're going to create a um, a construction object. So whenever we try and create user object, we're going to have to pass it a user ID. Uh, this is important because we're going to use the same user ID for all of our code that goes within this particular class. So all we need to do is set our user ID equals user ID. Okay, so that's all we're doing is when we create a new co instance of this class. Uh, we're going to tell it which user we're creating it for. And then we need to start thinking about what we actually need to get out of the system. Um, so the first thing we're going to need is uh, get photo or get current profile photo maybe. 
And what that's going to return is a string that is the actual uh, address of where we're going to find our, our current person's photo. Um, at the moment, I don't actually have any photos uh, to use. So let's see if we can add an existing item and see if we can find a photo on my uh, virtual system. Uh, chances are there must be a picture somewhere. Um, right, I've got a character here. Well, let's open this with paint. This is actually from a, a game engine that I've, I've built. Um, yeah, what we can do is we can literally uh, just let's crop it into a square uh, and save as. And I'm going to save this just on my desktop for now and say this is called me.png. Uh, yeah, there's no transparency, that's fine. So now I'm going to go back to my desktop, find the me.png file that I've just saved onto it. There we go, and that's going to be me for now. Next thing I need to just do, I need to uh, make sure that I've got the address. And because we're using uh, relative URLs, I'm just going to pass it at the moment me.png. So images forward slash whoops me.png. So it's going to pass back the me.png file. So that will get the current profile photo. Um, how we use it then is we're going to start by creating a user object. And you may notice nothing's coming up. Well, that's because we've not put it in the usings yet. Um, and it's called contact circle code. So there we go. U user object usr equals new user object. And we have to pass it the user ID. We have to create it. And the user ID is obviously the ID that's coming over on the string. And it is already a string because it's part of the query string. So we now passed it the right information. And then we're going to say image profile, image person dot image URL equals USR dot get current profile photo. And that will instantly now load up the person's photo. At the moment, we're not looking at the user ID, but when we actually create it properly, this will obviously get it from the database. Um, we need to do the same thing for person's name. and it's me, so Chris Lewis. And we're probably going to want to know what the current status is. Current profile status. Turn creating videos on social networking programming. And on our page that we've got uh, profile. I'm going to get rid of all this text here rubbish. I'm going to put instead another label control. Call this LB status text um, status so that I can start building up everything about this person. So LB person dot text equals USR dot get current profile name lb status dot text equals usr dot get current profile status so now when I run the system again go onto our default page I'm going to log on with Chris got my password and there you go it's automatically going to size the image no matter what size you've given it and stretch and skew it to being 250 by 250 pixels. It's got my current status at the side there and it's got my name underneath. Let's just format it to make it look a, a little bit nicer. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is on our style here, I'm going to text align center. So at least we've got centered text. And the other thing I'm going to do on our main style, at the moment we've been doing all this font family, font size and things like that in each section. I'm now going to set it so that our font family is the same all over the entire website. And I'm going to create a basic font size of 10 pixels. 
So now it's only if we overwrite either of those values that I need to put it in. So I'm going to go to font family from there. Everything else looks okay. I'll leave it like that. The next thing I do want to do on my LB person, I want him slightly bolder and heavier. So let's see what we can do with that. As you can see now he's more centered. That's exactly as we want it. And can we actually change anything on here? Well, we've got these things here, font. I can say bold, uh, I can say size, I can say larger, for example. That's looking more like what I might want to do. Now status, that's really good, um, but it doesn't say what it is. Uh, so we're actually going to write, just next to it, the word status and a colon. So in text it just says status colon and then the label. Let's load it up just to check. And here we have status creating videos on social networking programming. It's a bit close to the side, but at least it's got my photo, my name underneath. We're getting somewhere. What else can we do? Well, let's make some quick changes. Um, first of all, I'm going to put a gap in between my two floating items. So I'm just going to say padding left 10 pixels. So now it's going to push everything 10 pixels to the left. So it will give a nice um, uh, space. I'm going to change its current status because I think that would look nicer. I'm actually going to add in uh, some bold tags in my HTML. So now it will say current status in bold and then the status. And you can see there's the 10 uh, pixel gap between the words and, and the item. The other thing I'm going to do on the login user. Um, now I've actually got my uh, ability to, um, on the login control, of knowing the person's details from the user object. So if I have the person's user ID, I can find out their name. Instead of saying um, welcome user on my uh, panel here, which is what appears obviously on the user login, I'm going to change that as well. I'm going to say welcome and then change that to a label. You can use a literal as well, it doesn't actually matter. Make that LB name, text, I'm going to just change to person at the moment, or maybe user, an exclamation mark. In fact, actually, I'll get rid of the exclamation mark there and put it at the end here. And then what I'm going to do is, before I do my redirect and sort out my PN welcome, if the session user does, does not equal null, I'm going to actually create a user object from the user ID, which I can do by getting the session variable now, dot to string, and then I can make lb name dot text equal usr dot get current profile name. So I'm getting the name of the person on the screen. And if I do the same thing after I've added the session variable as well, I know it's going to do a redirect, so actually all of this is irrelevant. Um, what does it say? Oh, USR2, because I've already got something called USR up there. Um, I can now run my program, and it just that looks that little bit neater and tidier. And we're then ready to start doing some actual proper coding in the next video. Let's give it another check. There's the password. Login. Welcome Chris Lewis. Current status. Creating videos on social networking programming. And there's my name underneath. So, makes life a lot easier. Um, you've now got a basic structure for your um, profile page, which is really quite useful. Uh, what we're going to do now is start looking at connecting it to a database so we can have more than one user and actually start doing some work uh, in the more useful code.